So thank you for being here. The Lord thanks you for being here. You didn't have to come. And it's actually a very good turnout for Holy Thursday. So thank you. It's not a holy day of obligation. But it's a holy day of opportunity to go deeper in our faith, but also to say thank you to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the priesthood uh, so that our sins can be forgiven through sacramental reconciliation. Thank you, Jesus, for the Eucharist, for your, your body and blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist, in communion that we can receive whenever we go to Mass or adore him, be close to him, close to his real presence. Thank you, Lord, for being um, usually here in the tabernacle. This is a one time during the year in which um, we do not have Jesus in the tabernacle, but we'll have him in a few moments on the altar, and then we will, at the end of Mass, process over to the parish center, and you'll be able to spend time with Jesus in the garden of uh, repose there, like Jesus was in the agony in the garden that night before he suffered for us on the cross. So thank you, Jesus, for always being among us soon in the, uh, in the Eucharist, in the Eucharist. And thank you, Jesus, for your humility, for showing us how to love one another, how to serve one another. That's um, the three main things, really, of tonight. Priesthood, Eucharist, and service. And in a few moments after the uh, homily, I will uh, wash the, the feet, or at least one foot, one foot of uh, 12 different people that have been chosen. We went through a process of choosing 12 different people, those people whose feet do not stink. And so that's how we have chosen, I think, right? Is that how you did that? Okay, good. That's, that's why I hear. So, so that's going to happen there. So we'll, we'll wash their feet in, in, in imitation of Jesus and what he did. Our feet aren't that bad these days. You know, we keep our feet in socks and, 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 and shoes and everything, and we, can, we do all the different things with our feet, manicures or whatever. And, uh, but the feet, the feet at the time of Jesus were pretty gross. And uh, that was considered beneath anybody except for the slaves and the servants of the, of the area to wash when someone would come in from a, from a long distance, all dirt and stuff on the open uh, sandals. And so, yeah, that was like the lowest of the low. And then Jesus, the lowest thing you could do. But Jesus, God himself, stooped that low to wash the feet of his disciples. To wash the feet of his disciples. Even Judas. To wash the feet of, of all of them. It's also symbolic of what he would do. He says he took his outer garment off, so I would take my chasuble off. But remember the next day when he was on the cross in front of everybody and beaten, and scourged, and stripped. That's what he was called to do from his father, the father's plan. And that's what he wants us to do for each other. It's nice symbolism, and it's, it's beautiful for that, and we'll do that with the uh, washing of the, of the foot, of the feet. But the reality is that's supposed to lead to the cross. That can cost us. That service will cost us. We may not be crucified like Jesus. We may not go to martyrdom, the point of shedding of blood. Some of us may be. But most of us will all at least go through some type of martyrdom, a spiritual martyrdom, in which we may be um, uh, spoken against because of what we believe or what we uh, hold for. We may be canceled. We may be fired. Um, people may go against us because of what, uh, who we follow. And Jesus says, do that anyway. Even if they are going against you, even if they're maligning you, even if they're talking bad about you, wash their feet anyway. Wash their feet anyway. Don't just wash the feet of those you like, of those who are hanging around with you all the time, those who agree with you all the time. 
be willing to wash the feet of everybody. That is a true Christian. That's the true test. Even to the point of Jesus, when he suffered and died on the cross, when he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He was forgiving the, the Roman soldiers who were brutal, and they were um, experts in killing people, torturing people. And he said, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. How will people know about Jesus except that they see his love through us, through our service, through our words, through our actions, through our life? We heard from the the second reading the actual words of of Jesus, and and we have those those words from the Mass. When the the priest, when I say the words of Jesus from the Last Supper, do this, this my body, do this in remembrance of me, that we believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit, at that moment, the bread will become the body of Christ. It will still taste like bread, still look like bread, because the Lord doesn't want to gross us out, so, but he, that will, the actual substance, will be his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And when I say the words they said at the Last Supper over the wine, that wine at that moment will become the blood of Christ. And after three years, we'll be able to receive, whoever wants to receive, uh, the blood of Christ and the cups uh, tonight. We heard from the first reading of our ancestors, our spiritual ancestors in the faith, our, our Jewish brothers and sisters, how they went through the Passover, how the angel of God passed over them. Why? Because the angel saw the blood of the lamb on the lintels, the, the lamb that was sacrificed at twilight. And then they were freed from slavery to Pharaoh because of, of what God did. That was the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn. And in each of these plagues, the Lord was showing that he is God and not the gods of the Egyptians. Each of the plagues was going against different um, animals and different, uh, the sun and, and stuff that was showing that God was true God and not these other idols, not these things that they were worshiping. It's only one God. And even to the point of uh, the firstborn was seen to be, it was like a divine aspect or the firstborn of Pharaoh would become the next Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was seen to be as divine, as a god. And God was saying, no, no king, no Pharaoh is God. There's only one God. Remember when Pharaoh, the previous Pharaoh, um, tried to kill all the male Israelites. Jesus, or God, God delivered his people. But Jesus delivers his people in the new covenant, in his blood, and which is greater than the Passover of old. What we will experience tonight is greater than what they experienced, what was it, over 3,000 years ago, the Passover. We now experience the body and blood of God himself. We can receive that. Be close to him. Here's my invitation for all of us tonight. Just as Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, and he made it clear that he had to do it. Why? To show us an example. He, Peter, and the others had to humble themselves to allow Jesus, God himself, to wash their feet. And Peter couldn't do it until Jesus basically said, I have to. Unless you're not going to be in a kingdom if I don't. So Peter said, yes, okay, then do it. Jesus wants to come into every corner of your heart, every every aspect of your your life, even those dirty parts, even those parts in which you're like, no, God, don't go in there. 
let me, you know, you know how when people come to your house and, and you like throw everything, if you have some time, some, some time to prepare, you throw everything into one room and the house looks clean, you know, once they get there, but you know it's not, or you put everything under the bed, everything under the sofa, whatever, and, uh, or sometimes you don't want to invite people over, or, or you come up with excuses. Someone's come over to your house and like, you come with excuses, no, I, I'm sorry we can't, because you're thinking, oh, my house is a mess, and you're going to see how messy my house is, right? Or, oh, yeah, okay, I can come up with other examples. So, Jesus wants to come even into those rooms, even into your house when it's a mess, especially when it's a mess, because he is the one who knows how to clean it. He knows where all the dirty parts are, and he has a solution that can totally clean those dirty parts of your house and your heart. There's no other solution, no other chemical, no thing of this world that would clean your heart like Jesus does. Yet he waits for our permission to let him in. What is that solution? What is that, that chemical, so to speak? What is that cleaning agent? Well, it's not a thing, and it's a, and it's a, it's a who. It's Jesus himself. Yes, by his Holy Spirit, but in a very concrete way, the Eucharist. The Eucharist, receive him. Or if you can't receive him, at least to be close to him, to receive him spiritually tonight. Sometimes we're at a place in which we can't receive him. At least receive him spiritually. Be close to him. Spend some time in the, uh, in the garden afterwards or, or, or make a resolution to, okay, Lord, I've got to spend an hour a week with you just to be with you because I need more cleaning in my heart. Allow the Eucharist to clean you and confession. That is the other part of the cleaning agent. It's tough for us to own up to it or it's tough for us to say it to a priest, because we get caught up in people's opinion, but in the end, we're, we're confessing to Jesus through the priest. We all have to do it, myself included. We all have to go to a priest and ask for healing, ask for forgiveness from God to the priest. That's how God concretely showed us that he is with us until the end. But we have to humble ourselves like Peter and, and allow the Lord to wash our heart in confession. He'll wait. He wants it to be our choice. He'll wait. But please, don't put him off. Don't put him off. If Jesus is knocking on your door tonight, these next couple days, don't put him off. Open up the door, no matter how messy it is. Just open up. Oh, give him permission. Allow him to clean. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask for the courage, we ask for the humility um, to open up all the doors of our heart, especially those that are, we're most ashamed of. Lord, help us to open up those, those doors. Our garden angel, we ask your help. We need your help. Have the courage to open up those doors. Spiritually, so just Im imagine yourself just open up that door. Do not be afraid. He's the one who, he knows what's behind the door anyway. And he's the one who can clean it. Allow him. Give him permission. Trust him. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus,